Hello everyone uh, and welcome to Alumni Talks. In today's webinar, we'll uh, get first-hand impressions on the experience of pursuing a full-time MBA at Audencia Business School. My name is Zornitsa and I'll be the, the moderator of this online session on behalf of Unimai. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining us and to welcome our panelists, Mr. Benjamin Rethnell, International Relations Manager at the Administration, at the Admissions Department at Audencia, as well as Xin Wen Jiang and Ricardo Arenas, two of the current MBA students at Audencia. They will be telling us more about their decision to start an MBA and how it contributes to their professional development. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the chat box and we'll take the time to address them in the Q&A session in the second part of this webinar, right after the panel discussion. Before we start, uh, let us double check whether everyone can hear us well. Uh, so I'll kindly ask you to write the country you're coming from in the chat box. Can I uh, ask you to do that, please? Oh, attendee? Yes, all right, I got a confirmation that you can hear me well. So uh, then I'll give the word to Benjamin. Great, well, thanks a lot for having us here today. Once again, my name is Ben. I work in the International Admissions Office. So for anybody who does uh, decide to apply for an MBA program, I'll be here to uh, go through your application and help you with any sort of questions that you may have. You can also contact us at international at odensia.com. And today I'm joined by two of our MBA students because I think it's really important to be able to see what it's like to be uh, an MBA student in the classroom. You know, there are a lot of questions that you may have when you're deciding what type of a program or where should I go to study? So some of the greatest sources of information is from our students themselves. And we had already received a certain number of uh, questions and we have questions that normally come up in these types of discussions. So I guess just to kind of kick off our discussion, I will um, ask both of you to, to sort of um, weigh in on this. But I was wondering, you know, how did you actually decide to uh, apply for an MBA or pursue your MBA? Talk me through a little bit of the, the, the the decision-making process that went through your mind when you were uh, deciding to apply for one of these programs. So Shinwen, do you think that maybe you can start us off by answering that? Yeah, no problem. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, a couple of words on my, uh, about myself first. And my name is Xinwen. I'm from, I'm from Shanghai, China. And before joining Audencia, I had been working as purchasing manager for the biggest Spanish supermarket chain, Mercadona, for almost seven years. Um, I'm a person who believes in continuing learning. So and by the end of my previous job, as I have accumulated uh, like almost uh, more than six year experience and developed deep knowledge in the field, I feel like I wasn't learning as much as I used to or as, I, as much as I want to. And simply I felt less motivated at work. Besides, I think that I have always have some entrepreneurial spirit in me. So I wanted to learn more about um, entrepreneurship and also explore uh, the opportunities that are there, uh, out there. That's why I decided to quit my work and pursue the MBA. Uh, the MBA. And uh, why did I choose? Uh, why did I choose nuns, friends? Uh, well, I decided to study in France because of the many cultural similarities with Spain, where I have been living before. And uh, yet there are many differences. Um, so it's somewhere I believe that's um, where I believe I can experience the familiarity and also the excitement of uh, with learning new things. For example, a totally different language. And uh, besides, it's interesting because eight years uh, eight years ago, I was when I was living in Colombia, I had my uh, best friend whose uh, daughters were studying in art. And that was the first time that I heard about the city. And they told me that, if, that it's a very charming place. So that is one of the reasons why I chose um, not. And Audencia is uh, obviously the best business school here. So that's the reason why I pursued, decided to pursue an MBA and specifically in not. Great, thanks a lot for sharing that with us. And, and Ricardo, maybe uh, I'll ask the same question to you. Maybe you can kind of give us a little bit of information about yourself and, and some of the decision-making processes that went through you know, deciding to apply for an MBA. 
Yeah, sure, Ben. Hello, everyone. I'm Ricardo. Uh, I come from Mexico. Uh, a little background of myself. I was working in Uber uh, as a retail operations manager. That is all the activation centers that Uber has uh, for the drivers. So I was managing uh, seven uh, cities in, in Mexico. And the reasons why I decided to pursue an MBA, first of all, is uh, to combine my professional experience with uh, some uh, knowledge about uh, how to manage people in a theoretical way. One advice that I can give you is to think about what do you want to, to do in your uh, next steps in your professional career. In my case, uh, I want to keep managing people and I want to keep being in these human and people roles. So for me, it was a clear decision that uh, MBA gives you these kind of tools uh, that uh, will help you in uh, managing people, in realizing your inner skills and become like a, a generalist to see different parts of the organization. It's a very good element of the MBA. Um, also, uh, I wanted to expand my networking in an international way. Uh, you know that I know that you have different opportunities in your home countries to do an MBA, but in my case, I would like to go uh, in a international schools that uh, offers this opportunity. And uh, finally, uh, similar to Xing Wen, I was looking for a top school, uh, not only in, in France, but also in Europe. And one advice is also to look at the rankings and the certifications. And you are going to see that uh, Audencia is very uh, top in the rankings and has the triple crown. It's something that it's uh, just uh, quite about 2% of the schools. So that's my reason why I decided to study an MBA here in Audencia. Great, thanks a lot for that. And I mean, I think that there are lots of different paths that take us to an MBA. So it's great to hear about some of the different reasons why people might decide to go on to this type of uh, study. But I think also what a lot of students wanna know is what is it like to really be in the classroom itself? So I guess I'll, I'll also ask this question to both of you and starting off with Ricardo, I was wondering, you know, could you maybe tell us a little bit about what it's like to be in the classroom and maybe some of the things that you enjoy the most about the MBA program? Sure, Ben. Uh, the first thing is the multicultural alumni that we have in the classroom. Uh, we come from uh, four of the five continents uh, in the earth. So for me, it's very enrichment that we have a different discussion depending on the country that you uh, were uh, before. We have different point of view. Uh, we have like this uh, multicultural environment uh, that will help you to analyze all the different elements of the class uh, from a different perspective. That's something really amazing of this MBA. And on the other hand, I really like the class, the structure of the class. Uh, for instance, we have uh, case studies. It's not just the lecture that you are going to listen to the professor, but also you are going to analyze and sometimes discuss with your uh, classmates, with the professor, what do you think that uh, the, uh, the answer of certain problem is that? And for me, that's very interesting because it's not like you just are, uh, you are just learning, you are learning how to learn. So for me, that's very important in an MBA. Yeah, completely. I mean, especially when we're preparing these sort of managers for tomorrow, imitating that real world life experience where you find, you know, such diverse, very practical uh, applications of what you'll be doing in, in, in business after graduation. I think that that's really helpful. And, and Shinwen, same question to you, I guess. What are some of the things that you really enjoy about the MBA? Uh, well, besides what Ricardo has mentioned, so um, I also enjoyed a lot the diversity of, the, no, sorry, the variety of the subjects about the business management that we can learn during the program. We have core courses that cover um, subjects such as um, finance, accounting, human resource, supply chain, marketing. So uh, a big part of the, of the different functions that exist in an organization. Um, so it helps us to develop a deeper and more thorough understanding of all these functions or uh, about an organization as a, as a whole. And it's, it is definitely challenging, uh, but I enjoyed it a lot because I feel like that um, I have the chance to uh, keep training my brain to process new information and uh, absorb new knowledge. So I feel like it's, I feel that it's very enriching 
that's why I really enjoyed it. Um, and besides that, besides uh, some of us are planning to change our career, but some of us, we don't have a very clear idea of what function we want to carry out in the future. And I think that this type of um, program also, these type of courses also give us, um, helps us find a better um, idea about what we are good at and uh, what we are particularly interested in and to give us a guidance of where we want to be, what we want to do in the future. That's what I enjoy as well. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, an MBA really prepares people for that senior level manager role where you're not only just focusing on one department, but you're seeing how it relates to all of the different departments. You really have to have that strategic vision. And in addition to these sort of marketing and accounting and uh, you know, human resources courses, I think also these types of courses that um, really help to hone these practical skills that we have, the things that we do with the Career Services Center. You know, I find that to be really important for an MBA as well. And I guess... Uh, for you, Ricardo, uh, you know, have you had contact with the Career Services Department? Can you talk a little bit about maybe uh, some of the activities that you've been doing with them? Yeah, sure. Um, I really enjoy uh, this career department because we have three different elements that, if, in my opinion, are, is very important when you are deciding your next step in your professional career. The first one is the diverse workshops that we have. Uh, for instance, uh, we have had some uh, workshops about designing your career, self-leadership, also uh, some elements either in French or in English that can help you analyze uh, your strengths, your weakness, and start working from that. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, these uh, seminars about the uh, resumes, cover letters, elevator pitch. Uh, for me, it's very important because, you know, uh, you are used to elaborate and CV or cover letter based on your home country, but you have to analyze, and it's pretty obvious, you have to analyze the implications if you want to uh, work in France or in Europe, and the career service helps you to tropicalize and analyze these uh, features in order to build a strong uh, resume. And the first one uh, is something that Shinwen already mentioned, is the guidance that you're going to find if you want to change your career. Sometimes uh, you just have to expand uh, the roles that you have been doing, or, or sometimes you just want to uh, keep, uh, start working in a different uh, industry or role. And the career service uh, helps you in realizing your inner skills, uh, your possibilities and start designing this movement or career change in order uh, to apply for the jobs that you, you love after the MBA finishes. Great, thank you for that. Um, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about like what goes on in the classroom environment and some of the services that we have on the campus. But a lot of times I'll get questions from students about what it's like, you know, off campus, you know, what is it like outside the classroom? Everything is in English in the classroom, of course, but, you know, we're located in France. So, so sort of what is that like? And, and I guess getting, um, you know, an international student's perspective, Shinwen, I was wondering, you know, um, how important do you think it is that, that students learn French before beginning the program? Uh, well, I would say, well, it, maybe it's not necessary to learn French as we mentioned, everything is, uh, everything in class is in English, but I would say that it's definitely important to learn French, especially before coming here. Why? Because um, the, the program is really important really tense. So normally we spend a lot of time on our assignments um, after school or usually also during the weekend. So I would strongly suggest that if you want to start learning French, do it as soon as possible. And uh, from the job finding standpoint, if you can speak French, obviously you can have more opportunities, job opportunities than non-speakers here. Um, and you can also join more webinars uh, as since uh, some of them are only available in French, and um, from the from and for the life day-to-day uh, -day life in France, if you can speak some basic French, um, it will definitely make your it will make your life easier, but also a lot more enjoyable. So I would suggest that I would say that it's definitely important both for the day-to-day um, -day life for your 
personal experience here and also for the job opportunity uh, from the prof professional um, point of view. And um, especially if you want to work in France, it's definitely absolutely important. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. I mean, just to kind of underline the fact that since everything is in English, of course, we don't require any of our students to learn any French, but I, I always think it's a great opportunity. It can only help people in their career going forward. You know, language skills are always a plus. It's never anything that's going to hurt you uh, in the long run. And uh, of course, you know, kind of hearkening back to what we were talking about with career services, a lot of the work that they do is really guide people towards the careers that are right for them. So if somebody is looking to work in France, it's practically a requirement to speak French in order to get those jobs. But of course, you know, these aren't the only jobs that we have. We have quite a few alumni who are working in the north of Europe, especially in the Netherlands, where you know it's not necessary to speak the local language in order to be able to get the job. Um, but it's good to be able to hear uh, you know, from a student's perspective about the importance of, of learning a language and what the environment is like. It does help with the day-to-day -day life. And, and I guess another question that we get about day-to-day -day life that happens to be topical um, is about COVID and, and sort of the effect that it's had, especially in the classroom environment. So I was wondering, Shinwen, if maybe you could kind of continue and tell us a little bit about the impact of COVID on, on uh, the learning environment. Yeah, sure. Um, now we're having a hybrid format uh, of uh, courses, meaning that's a mixture of uh, online and offline courses. And uh, actually, Audencia is doing a great job adapting the format constantly according to the changing measures in, in France. Last year, at the beginning of our program, we had um, online courses uh, during the first two weeks. And after we had, after that, we had one month of um, courses on campus. Uh, until the second confinement in France. So, and, and after that, that the, the measures have been changing. And uh, re lately we have been, uh, we have the opportunity to be at school uh, once or twice each week. Um, so for the, and uh, actually we don't know uh, how, what's next week might be because um, the measures can, can change at any day. So, and um, besides, uh, we cherish uh, well. Uh, based on that, uh, apart from that, we do cherish a lot of the time that we get to meet each other, um, as the opportunities are not as many as there are there were before, um, and also we were very happy to see each other when we have chances and to see our classmates and uh, and also see our professors physically. I think that actually this situation has taught us to spend. Um, better quality time with each other every time we have the opportunity to meet up. And I would say that as a group, um, we have been able to establish a very close relationship among us, even though that physically we have been, we have le spent less time together than um, the previous cohorts could. And, um, uh, and that, uh, apart from that, we feel safe on campus. Um, we even have an exclusive classroom for the MBA class on campus. And besides there are um, sufficient facili in, in for facilities and procedures for safety and health measures. So we feel safe um, on campus as well. So that's the big picture of, the, uh, of how COVID is affecting our, in, how the impact of COVID on our classroom environment is. Uh, it's great to hear about that experience inside the classroom. And I guess just to let everybody know as well that for anybody who's applying in the future, these are, are topics that we are constantly improving upon and making sure that we allow for the most amount of flexibility for students when possible, um, but also a sort of continuity that when it is impossible, providing that same level of, of education and interaction between students and, and sort of informing people about you know, new working styles that I think we're all having to adapt to around the world of uh, remote working and, and the sort of expectations and technologies that go along with that. So great, thanks a lot for, for sharing about that. Now, uh, another question that I get quite a bit um, you know, especially during this period of the year is, is tips about app, uh, applying for the different programs. Um, you know, we have our uh, admissions criteria that are, are posted on uh, the website, but Ricardo, I was wondering, you know, do you have any tips for anybody who might be listening today? Anything that you'd like to say to potential applicants to help them along with the sort of application process? Yeah, sure, totally. 
Um, for me, there's uh, there were four main uh, elements that I did during my uh, pre preparation of the MBA that helped me a lot. The first one was interact with uh, the faculty that we are going to have. Uh, for instance, we can start sending messages to professors, to the international office to know more about the program. And it is something very useful because sometimes uh, you are deciding um, which elective uh, you are going to take, you are deciding whether uh, you will have to uh, select one project or, or a, a, another. So for me, it's very important that I start having this relation with the future faculty in order to know more about the program. So that's my first tip. The second is start uh, continue updating with the current situation of brands. Uh, as Jim Wen mentioned, something very important is to know what's going on. So uh, in my case, and I think that in most countries, there is a um, um, uh, different part of the embassy that is called Campus France, that you can go on the web page and know what's going on in France and with the students' requirements. The third one is create a network from the beginning. This is very important um, because uh, you are going to have, as Simon mentioned, a very good experience with different classmates. And it's uh, the students uh, you start interacting with them, uh, the better will be for your studies. Uh, so it's just easy to create a WhatsApp group also use the available resources that we have. For instance, go to the Facebook uh, web page of Audencia and start uh, knowing uh, what's going on there, the, your future classmates, etc. Uh, and finally, start looking for uh, your residence. If you already have your, your uh, acceptance letter, uh, please start looking for the residence because it's not impossible to find a residence when you're in France, but it is more complicated and you will be a little bit stressed if you continue to, you start doing that is when you are in France. So I would tell you that start looking for your residence from the beginning, that will help you a lot. Yeah, that's some great advice. I really think about connecting with people, whether it's on you know, the side of the institution, of course, we're here to help you with anything that you need for uh, you know, visas or you know, with, with housing. You, know, you can always contact us at internationaladodensia.com or we also have scheduling systems to set up calls with us, but also from the student side, you know, reaching out on social media and starting to build that network ahead of time uh, with the people who are gonna be joining you in the class, getting to know them and really uh, you know, starting to build that group or around you that's going to follow you, you know, really through the rest of your career is what a lot of people are looking for, um, you know, when they're considering an MBA. And I think it's really just kind of a continuation of the professional life that we have before the MBA that kind of goes into the program itself. And, and that leads me to a question that I get quite a bit of, you know, a lot of people who are applying, they're professionals, they've got, you know, a 40 hour a week job, um, they've got responsibilities. And I guess they're kind of wondering what it's going to uh, change in their lives. You know, this is going to be kind of a, a new chapter in their lives. So I, I was wondering if maybe, um, you know, we could start talking a little bit about what the, the common schedule is like. What's, you know, what's life like as a student? How does it really kind of compare to what their schedule may be? And I was wondering, Shinwen, if maybe you could kind of uh, give me your perspective on um, sort of the common schedule on, on the program. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, normally, we have classes every day during the week, and which might be two or three classes, well, three classes at most per day, and which means four to six hours of classes each day. And we start at, generally, we start at 8.15 uh, in the morning, and we finish at 4 p.m. or latest, or the latest six, a quarter past six in the afternoon. Um, and we also have some free days from time to time. So, um, but but you probably need to spend time on assignments and group work after a class, or as I mentioned before, usually during the uh, weekend as well. So um, the, there are there are plenty of time. Well, you will have free time and you can arrange it on your own. But as we mentioned, it's a very tense course. So it means a lot of effort, both inside the class and outside the class. So 
that's yeah i do i i mean i explain it just like a full-time job really i mean if you're not in class then a lot of time you're working on group projects or you know there are a lot of different presentations and, and networking opportunities that are offered outside the class sort of optional activities that you can use to you know really enhance your your professional profile and, and ricardo you know what are some of the things that you're doing outside of class i mean what type of networking opportunities have you found during the program yeah, I, I think that uh, one advantage of the MBA in Audiencia is, is that you are going to find several opportunities to network uh, here. The first one is pretty obvious, is the international networking that you're going to have in the class, but it is uh, pretty um, important because as she one mentioned, it, it, we are going to have like a, a real uh, interactive group within the MBA. So if you can start interacting and networking with your classmates, that would be very useful because at the end of the day, they can also become uh, some real friends after the MBA finish. Um, the second one is uh, the Students Association. Uh, and one uh, interesting element of Audencia is that you're going to find a different a variety of associations here. So you can start networking with French students and start practicing your French uh, if you are enrolling in these kind of associations. Um, then uh, you have the opportunity to network in the career service. Uh, and, uh, um, last week, uh, we have like a meeting with some uh, different MBAs uh, programs inside Audencia, executive MBA and an MBA in Algeria. Uh, so you have an opportunity to expand your networking uh, thanks to the career service. Also, uh, in Audencia, you have an internal web page in where you can uh, see different people that has done some internships in a relevant uh, area that you may have interest in. So it's another opportunity that you can network. Um, and the final one is uh, LinkedIn. It's pretty obvious, but uh, you can find your uh, professor, your faculty, and another uh, former alumni here. So it's a very good opportunity to start interacting with people with similar interest. But uh, one uh, last advice is that it uh, depends totally on you. Uh, you, ha you have these kind of tools, but it is important that you can take advantage of uh, most of it. So yeah, there's several opportunities, but you have also to look for them. Great, great advice. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is really kind of open it up to you who might be uh, listening today to see what sort of questions that you have. I've already received a couple of them, so I'm going to go uh, through those, but feel free to use the chat box or the question and response uh, section on Zoom, and I'll be taking a look at those and, and we'll bring them up. One thing that I think I'll address is something that I've seen in the chat box already about the hybrid option for next year. So we've been talking about these sort of online and on-site options, and yes, for 2021, we foresee that we will be uh, using this hybrid option as well. So uh, the idea behind it is that we want to give the most amount of flexibility to people who might have difficulties in traveling, uh, who might have problems with visas. And of course, you know, we also want to adapt depending on what the global pandemic situation is. If we do have to close our doors, we want to make sure that we are able to move anybody who is on site uh, into an online format. And of course, keep all of those services um, that are offered on site available as well. So, you know, continuing to allow people to make meetings with professors or support services. I think that's especially important for people who, you know, when you're traveling halfway around the world to do an MBA, uh, it can be a challenge to find yourself in a new environment, especially in an environment like this. So we do have that support there for anybody uh, who needs it. But yes, there will be a hybrid option. Uh, available and the sort of philosophy behind it is once again allowing the opportunity for people who want to be on site when they can be on site that's great and then offering the flexibility uh, for people to be able to study online according to their circumstances or depending on on the sort of pandemic situation in general um, one of the other questions that i got in the question and response section was can you give us more information about the full-time mba what type of students do you generally have backgrounds and et cetera? So I guess that this is really a, a question about the class cohort. So if you don't mind, maybe Ricardo, I can I can start off with you and then Shinwen, if you'd like to add anything, please feel free. Yeah, sure. Um, I can tell you that we have an extensive variety of people here with diverse industries. Uh, for instance, we have people uh, from uh, the retail industry. I was in, we were in the retail industry. Also we have people uh, working uh, in 
different parts of a uh, law uh, of uh, in China. We have also uh, people uh, working in India. So in my opinion, it's not a, a matter of just the industry. It's a matter of the soft skills that you want to develop. So if you are working in any type of industry uh, and you are not sure about what uh, your next step is going to be, I definitely uh, recommend you the MBA because this will give you a, a holistic approach of the different parts of the organization. It will give you an approach of the managerial experience as Ben said that you are going to be uh, working as a leader for after the, you graduate. So for me, it, it, my response would be, yeah, we have a diverse cohort, but that, depend, that is the good part of the MBA because it's very enriching. Great to hear. I mean, I really think the philosophy behind building the cohort is about you know, finding that strength and diversity. And you know, we did have another question that came up um, in the question and response section asking about somebody's profile in particular. They say, you know, I have eight years of experience. Does that put me at a disadvantage when it comes to the full-time MBA? And, and you know, from my perspective, at least when I'm dealing with applications, I mean, this is really sort of the, the main area that we're focusing on when we have people coming into the MBA. Of course, we have people who have a lot more experience, people who have a lot less experience, depending on the industry. But I think you know, uh, eight years of experience is a great amount of time to be able to get the responsibility, to be able to have that sort of project and people management skills, and then to bring that experience into the classroom and to share that with others. So for me, eight years of experience is really in that sort of sweet spot where you've had just enough time to be able to get that level of responsibility that you're going to be able to share with others and, you know, kind of use the MBA as a way to um, you know, transition into a new phase of your career, maybe into a new industry, maybe a higher level of responsibility. But, you know, for me, I, I really think that, uh, you know, MBAs are made for that type of profile. And we want to see as much diversity in the classroom as possible, because somebody who has a lot of experience has something that they can learn from somebody who has less experience, but maybe coming from like a tech industry where things may be moving very quickly, you know, and then that person who has less experience is going to be able to uh, learn from the person who has more because they have that uh, history of working in a particular industry. So yeah, once again, just to kind of emphasize this fact of that in an MBA cohort, you want to have as many different types of profiles as possible so that everybody can learn from each other and not just, uh, you know, from the professors themselves. So great. Thanks a lot for sharing that. So I did want to move on to one other question, which was about online learning. So, you know, for some people, this is a brand new sort of phase in learning. Yeah, we're all sort of used to being inside the classroom and we have a certain expectation about it, but a lot of people, this may be their first time, uh, you know, doing a program online. So I was wondering if maybe, Shinwen, I could get your perspective on what online learning is like. What are some of the differences or what's your experience of, of online learning? Yeah, well, as Benjamin has mentioned, um, most of us, either it's both students and professors, are making efforts to adapt ourselves to this new way of learning. On the bright side, um, there are some courses that I feel like that, um, that are bet de better delivered better delivered online. For example, uh, those courses such as finan financial management, accounting, where it involves lots of formula and calculation on uh, using the computer. I feel that, that it's easier to follow the screen of the professor online. So, um, and uh, well, there are also other courses that naturally require more interaction with the professor and more discussion. Um, then it is more challenging those cases. But now as we have been spending five months using, uh, using this um, online learning tool, uh, we're getting used to, we're getting more and more used to this format and also becoming less shy of switching on our cameras and or, or our microphone. And we, so now we can still make the courses quite interactive. And um, well, after all, personally, I believe that the, this whole experience of online learning is giving us the opportunity of developing and enhancing our skills of um, communication, teamwork, online teamwork, and online leadership skills, which would be definitely be useful for uh, our personal and professional life in the future. 
is what I think. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. I mean, a, a lot of us are working remotely now, and really what we're, we're doing in the classroom is once again, sort of imitating that real world work environment. You know, we all have to kind of um, get up to date on these skills of different um, collaborative working environments or different ways of working together when we can't necessarily be in the same room. So, um, you know, as much as this is a, a horrible situation, I think there are also, you know, new ways of doing business that are going to come out of this and be long lasting already with our students that are going into, you know, internships or full time employment after we're seeing more and more businesses are requiring them to work remotely immediately after graduation. So I think um, you know, at the same time, it does require training up on new skills, but those skills, once again, will be useful in professional life after graduation. Okay, so uh, that's currently the questions that we have. I do want to invite any of the students who are participating today to leave any sort of questions before we finish up. Um, while you're asking any of those last minute questions, I do want to address one thing that came up into the chat as to whether this will be available. Um, on another format. So what will happen is this uh, recording of this will be available to any of the participants and, and also um, you can get it by contacting us at international at odensia.com. And uh, once again, I would just invite you to um, you know, don't hesitate to contact us. If you do have any questions, we can always set up a call uh, on Skype or on WhatsApp or, or any of the uh, different types of tools that you'd like to connect with us. You can always uh, connect with us directly to answer your questions. Sometimes it's a little bit harder, you know, when you're on a public forum like this to ask something specifically when it deals particularly with your application, but that's what we're here for. We're here to, um, you know, answer any of those questions that you have. And, and if we don't have the answer, we can always put you in contact with, uh, you know, any of our professors or our students who will be able to help you with that information. So. Uh, ben, let me just uh, ask, uh, add something. Uh, actually, this uh, video, this webinar is going to be is being recorded. And I will send the links to the video on YouTube uh, to everyone who has attended and who has registered. So yes, you will be able to see the video afterwards. And uh, maybe one question on my end, because I noticed that uh, a lot of the attendees come from different countries. Um, so uh, is there some sort of a visa support uh, on the part of the university? Do people from countries outside France and outside Europe get supported in their application process? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think I can probably speak from this a little bit more on the um, institutional side. I mean, uh, particularly with the MBA, when you take a look at our rankings, um, you know, The Economist, for example, puts us in the top 10 in the world for diversity. And like I said, this is really the philosophy behind mm -hmm. creating the cohort. So, you know, whenever you are having people who are coming from around the world, you have to have the support structures behind that as well. And so at least when I'm talking about from the admissions side, there are lots of different uh, things that we do to help the, not only financial aid that uh, you know, may be there for people who are coming from underrepresented nationalities or backgrounds, or we're here to help with things like housing or like visa applications. So yeah, we have a, an entire support structure here for our international students. Because like I said, you know, when you're asking somebody to come so far, um, you, know, you have to have the, the support behind that. Mm -hmm. And what about scholarships? Do you have available scholarships at your university? We do. And I would invite people to take a look at the program uh, website uh, in our admissions and finance section. It has a full list of the different types of scholarships that we have. We have some that are based on when people apply, so like an early application phase. Uh, like I was saying, we have uh, ones that are based on uh, diversity, either in background or nationality. We have others that are merit-based scholarships, depending on how well somebody does on uh, the application. Basically, there are 100 points in total on the application, and then we rank people based on the number of points that they get. Um, or there are other project-based scholarships that are available. And then um, what's nice about applying early, and I always invite people to apply early, um, what's nice about that is that the earlier that you apply, the more financial aid that you can get. Basically, there are deadlines that happen throughout the year. And as people apply early, they then become eligible for any of the financial aid that comes up later in the year. What we do is we contact people based on the information that they provide in their application to let them know when a deadline is coming up or what type of uh, elements they'll need to submit to us in order to be able to be eligible. So once again, if anybody has any questions, you can mm -hmm. always contact us directly at internationaladodensia.com, but I would invite uh, any participants to take a look at that admissions and finance section of the program webpage. Great. Then meanwhile, we have another uh, question. 
It's from a person who jumped in later. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he's asking, it's Frederick, he's asking uh, whether, uh, yeah, we're talking about the MBA now, or what about the EMBA, the executive right. MBA? Yeah, that's an important question. So we have a couple of different types, a few different types of MBAs, in fact. And then one is an executive MBA, and this one that we're talking about in particular is the full-time MBA. Now, normally what happens is when people are applying for the executive MBA, they are already in France. They're working because it is a part-time structure. And also it does have um, certain elements that are taught in French. So what it's kind of made for is for somebody who is already working here, who already has a good handle on French, who then wants to go on to an MBA, but maybe doesn't want to quit their job. And then in that case, they would do two days every two weeks where they would need to come to the school to do uh, their work. Um, but like I said, there's also a part of it that's in French, whereas the program that we're kind of focusing on that usually is um, most interesting to international students is the full-time MBA, because a lot of times people just kind of want to take a one-year break. You know, two years can be too long, but a one-year break to sort of get that guidance on maybe uh, the types of positions they should go for next or to get that update in the training um, and in an international environment where um, they can really kind of progress on their career before moving on in that next chapter in their professional life. So I would say two of the big differences is the rhythm. So it's a part-time structure on the executive MBA, full-time structure on the full-time MBA and language of instruction, which is partially in French for the executive MBA and entirely in English for the full-time MBA. Great. Well, maybe then one last question, just to yeah, wrap up uh, to, uh, Ricard, to Ricardo and Xinwen. Um, like, I guess you have applied or um, at least researched other MBA programs. So why MBA Audencia? What makes it stand out? And why would you recommend it to others? Okay, if you want, I can start. Um, as I told you, uh, first, the MBA of Audencia, when I was looking uh, and make, doing my research, I looked for MBA with, um, that it was in high in rankings. And Audencia is one of the most, uh, I think it's the sixth uh, MBA that in France. So for me, it was uh, one of the requirements for, uh, for, for, for my studies to be in a, in a very good ranked school because it, it talks about uh, the academic rigor and the academic uh, uh, environment of the class. So for me, it was very important uh, that. In addition, uh, the focus on the, of the, of the uh, school and Audencia is very, is, is focused on entrepreneurship and social responsibility. So for me, mm -hmm. it was something critical for my next steps. Uh, I want to I look for the opportunity to create my own business and Audencia has a track uh, precisely that you can do that. Uh, so that uh, for me, that the, the, the two most critical elements for, for my choice. Yeah, in my case, I would say that uh, yeah, apart from the ranking, which is obviously important and, um, and which is also a narrative Audencia, um, well, the, the city factors actually very important for me were like the, the city of Nantes, um, whether it's the climate, it's the quality of life. Um, there are like, it, I feel like it's a, one of the best choices for me. And um, um, mm. besides that also, also there's some, uh, the, the, the programs itself, the concentration, the electives that a program can provide, especially the CSR part, because um, Audencia is very, um, I would say, pioneer in the in the sense of CSR, in the field of CSR, and especially when you can combine the study of entrepreneurship and the CSR, that's something particularly intriguing me because um, I wanted to explore how do you combine those things, and I feel like there's a future. I mean, people started to talk uh, recent year, in recent years. Um, people are starting uh, have been starting to talk about this, um, especially the CSR. But um, it's still uh, pretty new, a pretty new topic. So I think that if we dedicate time, um, invest time in in this type of topic in the future um, will have uh, advantage over the others who might join um, these fields after us. So I think the concentration of CSR and entrepreneurship that Audencia can provide is uh, very interesting. Um, 
So that's some of the reasons why I choose to study here. Thank you very much, Ashin, Wen, and Ricardo. Uh, um, ben, yeah, if you don't have any any other comments, maybe no, that's just, really it for me. Yeah. I mean, I do see that we have uh, some students who are kind of contacting us about uh, you know something that deals more with their application in, in particular. So once again, I would just reach out to you to schedule a call with us or to contact us, and we can really kind of dig down deeply into what program is right for you based on your background and your needs. Hmm. Yeah, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we'll send everyone who attended and registered uh, an email, uh, not only with the link uh, to, the, to this uh, webinar uh, in, on YouTube, but also with, uh, with uh, audience's contacts, the contacts uh, of, uh, of the admission, uh, um, admission uh, section. So uh, everyone uh, who had some questions but wasn't able to, to ask them now or if the questions pop up later on, uh, you have the contacts you can uh, write to in order to get your questions answered. So uh, Ben, uh, Shinwen and Ricardo, thank you very much for taking your time to answer all these questions and to share your experience. It was really interesting and useful. Uh, so I will, yeah, I would like to, to thank you once again and to wish you a lot of success uh, to you and also to the attendees uh, who are uh, considering their MBAs. Um, good luck with your academic uh, development and we'll keep in touch with all of you and hope to see you soon.